<laughs> the opening scene, we see Soren training with Eternus, his sword, as Oz watches over him, and the angel is actually Haniel from the trading card game. So this opens up a few questions, because as we know, in the manga, Soren got the sword from Michael, the archangel, as he was being dragged into hell, but he's not able to use it in the story in the year 2022, which is telling us that this is more of a present day scene, seven years after the events of Doomsday, which means that at some point in the near future, Soren's going to learn how to master and use Eternus. Further, the angel Haniel is telling us that Soren will create a bond with the angels by the time he turns 25, which is actually the present day time period of Demon Rush. Also, Haniel is a card in the trading card game. She's a legendary rare greater being. When she's rallied, you get to draw three and discard two. If it goes off, if your opponent doesn't stop it, it's pretty much game breaking. Beautiful card, and I'm happy that we were able to get a little bit of her in the anime. <laughs> Oz tells Soren that he's built his body up well and he's able to wield Eternus more naturally, and this is because it requires an insane amount of Imperium in order to wield. And as we see in Demon Rush Chapter 10, Soren is not able to turn the feather into the sword, and we find out as Oz does that the feather is actually draining the user an incredible amount because it's used to the power of an archangel. It's like some battery that constantly needs to be charged, and Soren who's only 18 and is just learning how to break his limit of Imperium does not nearly have the well of Imperium required in order to maintain the sword. So by this time at age 25, Soren has presumably been through various battles and increased his strength a great deal, now allowing him to wield the Sword of Michael. <laughs> We know that Soren has a bond with Rush. Rush has been taken to the dark side, the evil side, and he's being forced into combat in order to become stronger. Because in Demon Rush, there is two ways to power up. One is by killing people and absorbing their Imperium in the form of dust, and the other is through training. Soren using his Feather Eternus as a form of weighted training, while Rush battles various enemies, and as he slays them, he absorbs their Imperium, getting stronger and taking their memories and abilities as well. But as we see from this clip, Soren obviously still has a large emotional connection to Rush, his best childhood friend that he grew up with. Rush has always been through rough patches in his life. Everything has gone wrong for him. And Soren, as a privileged kid, kind of understands this and sympathizes with him. He thinks Rush deep down has a good heart, and it's obviously weighing on him emotionally that he can't rescue his friend who has disappeared down the path of darkness. <laughs> As the story goes, thousands of years ago, there was this great massive war. Lucifer opened a hell gate and unleashed his entire legion onto Earth. So the angels came to fight with humanity to push them back, but at great cost, as most of the angels were destroyed. And in Demon Rush, there's very few angels left. After the ancient war of the Flaming Crowns and Michael being dragged into hell, it's not looking good for the holy side. And that's one of the biggest premise of Demon Rush is that evil is winning. So the stakes are incredibly high. And this demon right here, his name is Ghoul. He's actually a card from the trading card game and he is a greater being. He's a legendary rare, very hard to pull out of packs and very strong. And the angel that he's fighting is Cassiel, who you see quite a bit actually in this animated promo, he is Soren's main summon. As later on in the series, Soren learns how to summon the angels, as we saw from Haniel and later on from Cassiel in the episode. Cassiel is also a card, and he comes in the Soren starter deck. That is the only way to get the card. He's a foil, he's an angel greater being. He has a double attack and he's pretty strong. So I really wanted to put some footage of two greater beings fighting each other in the anime. 
For the book scene, I was trying to figure out what to put in here, and I decided to go with Pedro's sketches. He is such an incredibly phenomenal artist. There's a sketch for Al Golga and Rush and Eska, Young Soren and Rush, Michael, Rush's demon form. And instead of showing all those at the end, I thought it would be kind of neat to just throw them in here nonchalantly in this manner. As we saw from chapter six, Oz's library is full of ancient texts containing powerful knowledge and how to use spells with Imperium. And this book is supposed to to just symbolize one of Oz's texts, which holds the story of Demon Rush. Lucifer So we see that Soren stands on top of these rooftops, kind of overlooking the city, which is a scene from the beginning of chapter two of the manga. This is present day Soren, 25 years old, and he's explaining the story a bit in his own narration. Lucifer's army invaded seven years ago, and now there's demons roaming the planet, searching for power by either devouring people or with various mystical artifacts. By this time, Soren has obviously come into his own skin. He's standing on top of the rooftops, looking down for any sorts of threat or or evil. I don't want to give away too much about how his personality seems like it may have changed because he's going to be going through a lot in the seven year time skip. But as he explains, for the last seven years, he's been trying to keep the world from falling apart. And as we know, the holy side has diminished a great deal and evil is taking over. <laughs> Now Soren is explaining, as we go back to the year 2022, when Soren is 18 years old, how the threat from thousands of years ago is revitalized. As we see the Archangel Michael suddenly appear in the city, reporter is talking over him like, what the heck is this massive thing? We even see me in there, threw myself a little bit of a cameo, and yes, that was me speaking Japanese. But I like the look of this scene. It really gives you the sense of scale as to how big Michael really is. He is taller than the tallest skyscraper. On this day, these hell gates opened in Star City and demons started flooding out. This is General Adler. The military will have a role in this story, as you're going to see a lot from Chapter 11. Also, the second set of the trading card game is called Earth's Defense, and that focuses around the neutral soldiers, the humans, and General Adler. This giant demon that comes out is Al Golga, and if you read the manga in Chapter 3, Michael correctly points out that Al Golga's original form was an angel. So this fallen angel was given a ton of power from Lucifer in order to battle Michael. Lucifer created a demon more powerful than even himself. <laughs> So Michael comes by himself. He doesn't ask any of the other angels to come in order to close this hell gate and fight off Lucifer's legion. And that's because he doesn't want to lose any more angels. He is the most stoic, the most powerful of all the angels. He's an arc. And in order to prevent the other angels from falling, like they did in the ancient war of the flaming crowns, he came all by himself. But little did he know he was falling right into Lucifer's trap. Dada. ドラゴンの力は圧倒的だった。セレスティ、ウルトラ。今回奴らは我らの中で最強の
Michael puts up a great fight. He uses one of his signature moves, Celesti Fragor, which means divine lightning, and it does a lot of damage to Al Golga, but he unleashes a crazy ability of his own and completely decimates Michael. Michael wasn't expecting any sort of demon to have that level of power. He definitely did not expect Lucifer to create a demon more powerful than even himself, especially with how egotistical Lucifer is. They have this great battle, tons of damage is done to the city, but ultimately Michael loses and he is dragged into hell. And we find out why in Demon Rush chapter 9 as Lucifer wants to chain up Michael and drain him of his Imperium in order to open more of these hell gates. Because basically Lucifer, if you think of him as a battery, has to use his full battery, which has been charged for thousands of years, in order to open a hell gate large enough for Al Golga to go through. And presumably it would take thousands more years to open another hell gate as he's recharging. But now he has Michael and with their power combined, he can flood the world with demons. Oz explains that the repercussions of Michael being taken to hell is cataclysmic. It's world ending, especially with how few angels remain. And their strongest is gone now. It's setting up the story of Demon Rush, and that is one of darkness and despair. As Michael gets dragged into hell, he sees Sorn, and he sees Sorn has this special amulet, this necklace that has been passed down to him through generations. And that signals something in Michael that Sorn is important. He tells Sorn to put his hand on the sword, which turns into a feather, and Sorn pops. Pockets it. Oz explains that he needs to break his Imperium limit in order to use the sword. Now, Imperium is the resource pool of this series, it's the key or the chakra, and thus begins Soren's journey of training and powering up, traveling the world, fighting enemies, trying to become stronger, trying to become some sort of bastion of light in a world of darkness. But the sword, being the weapon of Michael, the greatest arc, requires an insane amount of Imperium to use. So, in order to be able to wield it, Soren must train like hell and increase his Imperium limit, his God power. <laughs> Now we see Soren clad in angelic armor, wielding Eternus and fighting a demon. This demon's name is C. Pasley. He's a very powerful card in the card game and I really wanted to show him in the anime. So what better way to do it than have Soren fighting him? And you get to see a little bit of Soren's holy abilities. He uses Manus Ligandi, which is hand of bindings. This giant hand of light energy comes out of nowhere and smashes C. Pasley down to the ground, pins him down so Soren can land a killing blow. So now that we flushed out Soren's story, we go to Rush's origin story. During Doomsday, he was running to the hospital to get to his mother. He got attacked by a group of demons. He was able to kill one, accidentally absorbing its Imperium. And that's when he was met by Karner, the warlock of the occult, who took him to hell and forced him to fight to the death. Karner becomes Rush's master as Oz is Soren's master. <laughs> Alright, now we have a clip directly from Demon Rush Chapter 8. This is Rush's first major battle against a demon named Jarkon. He's taken to Limbo, which is kind of like floor zero of hell. There he selects a weapon and he's put in this arena with two other humans as they face a demon named Jarkon. Now, it's up to them whether they want to work together or fight alone. Rush suggests they work together, but this guy whose name is Weasel, he's actually a card coming in set two, he loves combat and he jumps right in, getting his face completely smashed into the rocks. So this video wasn't like a full volume two, it was more so of like an extended trailer anime promo for volumes two and three, with a bunch of animations for the future to kind of help you put the pieces of the puzzle together and see more of the story. 
ラッシュは伝説のアーティファクトを探し求め、世界を駆け巡っている。Now we get introduced to a female with orange hair. She's got this gizmo on her arm and she seems pretty smart. She's explaining something to Soren. Now she has not been introduced yet in the Demon Rush manga, but you do see her again at the very final scene of this episode. I'm not going to spoil too much of her story, but you can tell by the information given that she seems to know more about what's happening with Rush than even Soren does. <laughs> Now we get to see Rush vs. Kona, the primal bear. He is a card in the Demon Rush trading card game. This anime promo was a great way to show how the cards connect to the story. Rush is traveling to different parts of the world, these kind of secluded locations, guarded by mythical creatures, as he tries to collect these pages of something called the Grand Compendium, the Book of Creation. And Lucifer wants this so that he can rewrite reality in his own image. Now we see a young Soren and Rush, 18 years old. So, this is after the events of Doomsday when they both first start training. And this is telling us that at some point, very, very soon in the manga, they're going to meet up. They're going to figure out what's been going on with each other since the events of Doomsday. And Rush is telling Soren, Look, we've been recruited to opposite sides of this war. That means that we're mortal enemies. Now, from this clip, I don't want to spoil are they trying to kill each other? I mean, they're friends. Are they sparring? Is Rush put up to this? Is he going evil from absorbing all this Imperium? Hopefully, I can get to this part around chapter 15 or 16. <laughs> <laughs> Now we get to see Helneth, the succubus. She is also a card. I love this animation done by Penguin Panic. She's a fan favorite card for obvious reasons. And she will have a role to play in the story as well. As you can see, she has a crush on Rush. There's also a succubus in Demon Rush that takes a fondness for Rush. And as we saw in the beginning of chapter two, it seems like all girls like him. But what is the secret she wants to tell him? Is she betraying Lucifer? We'll find out in the future. <laughs> And as we can see from this part, Soren at one point in the story will eventually get strong enough to summon angels. And it's not really a spoiler because if you read chapter one, you see Soren in what looks to be his final form. And the angel he summons, Cassiel, was also the angel that sliced up Ghoul from earlier. And this demon's name is Gorgon. Both of these guys are cards in the trading card game, and both of them come in the respective starter decks Gorgon for Rush, Cassiel for Soren. And I expect that. You'll probably see them fighting quite a bit in the anime. And now for the final scene, we see Soren and his group of comrades, his master Oz, Eska, and this other guy's name is Cole Hightower. He is actually being introduced in Demon Rush Chapter 11, which is on its way, will be out very soon. As you can see, they're standing on a cliff overseeing a sea of evil, and as Soren pierces through, you see Rush at the end, backed by Gorgon, and he transforms into his demon form from Chapter 1. Just a quick note this is not to say that Rush will get the This full demon form by the time he's 25 years old. I actually just threw that in there as an Easter egg because of chapter one. In fact, Rush will slowly go through his demon forming process throughout the series. Don't forget that we have three volumes of the Demon Rush manga done by an absolutely out of this world artist, Pedro Perez. I highly encourage you to pick some up off Amazon. And we have the insanely fun Demon Rush trading card game where you can play as a lot of these characters that you saw today. The card game is a great way to learn more about the Demon Rush universe, as well as make some new friends and engage in some incredibly fun and intense gameplay. If you're a fan of Demon Rush, please join our Discord link in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts, see your excitement, or 
see you at the $10,000 tournament on March 23rd. Without further ado, I'm Mastar. I hope you enjoyed Demon Rush, and I'll see you soon for more videos.